This is Cruise Control. Control. Your on-air automotive magazine with co-hosts Fred Staub and Les Jackson. Control. Everything you need to know about new and used cars. Control. Industry news. We'll fix or repair your car on the air. air. Fasten your seatbelts and let us take the wheel. Now, your ride is about to begin because you're on Cruise Control. Cruise Control. Cruise Control. And hello, welcome to everyone. This is Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. You know that. You listen to us or watch us every week. And you know that we've got a bunch of stuff about the auto industry. And uh, any day to talk about cars is a good day. So we're going to do that. Uh, Right next to me is Fred Staub, who is going to start us off. And of course, you know Fred very, very well. So, Fred... What's up? Hey, thanks for the lead up, Les. Uh, Appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we're going to start off with an interesting story. The auto industry is always full of them. And it involves a number of manufacturers and what their plans are for the internal combustion engine. This week, Toyota and Mazda said they're teaming up on new internal combustion engines that make a big difference. Nissan says it's not going to build any more internal combustion engines. (laughs) And Volkswagen spends billions of dollars of its EV budget to build new internal combustion engines. <laughs> How's that for yeah. a, a, a roll around the automotive industry and when it comes to budgeting and future power plants? You know, uh, I, there's, I know that they're paid millions and millions of dollars, but I would never run a car company. <laughs> no, you know, not now. I think it's... You, just, you die of ulcers within, within <laughs> uh, you know, within a year or two. Uh, but anyway, over at Cadillac and Honda, they want to go into the hypercar business, which is wow. You know, that's it, that's a new one. Yeah, there's a way to move from uh, being that's... a full line manufacturer into niche manufacturing. Yes, um, and. You know, spending a lot of money to do it. Yes. Um, we, you and I were just talking about Le Mans, and they yeah. say they want to build a hypercar that looks like what Cadillac races at Le Mans or something like it, which is pretty out there. It's way out there. Uh, it'll be cool. Yeah. But I don't know. Uh, you'll, I, it has to be bought by people. You'll stand out at the stop and shop parking lot. That's you for sure. You <laughs> certainly will at the Starbucks. Uh, and uh, why a big truck or SUV might not be as safe as you think. I've been saying I told you so about this for a couple of years and nobody's been listening. But yeah, well, the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety is listening. They've done some testing and we'll... Yep tell you a little bit about what they found. A new study says a lot less people are considering EVs and they're more excited about hybrids. So we'll talk about that, right? And that's an I told you so for you. Yeah. Uh, And then we're going to take a look at Toyota's Crown Signia, which is a Lexus without the Lexus badge. It's kind of interesting. It's It's a really nice vehicle. We'll talk about that and more when we come back on Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. Get out your roadmaps, everyone, (laughs) because (laughs) there's a lot of manufacturers talking about internal combustion engines less. And uh, there was talk that they'd go away, but apparently they're not going away because Toyota and others are building what they call game-changing internal combustion engines. Um, So let's start with Toyota. Toyota and Mazda are teaming up on these new internal combustion engines that their chief technology officer the toyota chief technology officer says are completely different than the internal combustion engines they will uh be uh both a 1.5 and a 2.0 liter uh engines and he says they will be completely different a shorter piston stroke 
they're going to be smaller. Yep. They'll revolutionize vehicle packaging, enabling lower front ends. Uh, the tor- torque lost in the process will be compensated by uh, instant response from electric motor. They are being developed primarily with hybrids in mind. Like, remember, you know, most of the engines that are built in hybrid systems exist on their own, and they just, hey, they right. have them, so they integrate them into a hybrid system, right? These are going to be purpose-built. They even have the idea of powering them with synthetic fuel as a thought. Um, so this is a big, 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 big announcement for both Mazda and uh, Toyota. And certainly, if they're developing these new engines, they're going to run past 2030, 2035. Oh, sure. Um, This seems like something somebody would have thought of years ago, but, you know, um, apparently not. Um, It now... Again, it, you know, it's real easy to talk about this stuff, but when you sit down there uh, and you actually engineer and machine the parts, uh, that's where they separate uh, <laughs> the people that know something from those who don't. Yeah, from those and, who wish uh, they did. <laughs> they wish they did, and it's really, really, really hard to to make something work, and then work in all kinds of uh, weather all kinds of stress uh, and, situations and, and have you know, toyota and for, reliability right and and last for 20 years so tricky tricky to say tricky. the least um but i love it i, I love the uh, i love the idea of it um i love the fact that well you know you can make an engine do what you want and in whatever wherever you're losing the torque you just have an electric motor taking the place uh, when it's needed, which is, or as part of it. So cool. I, I just, I love uh, people who design engines. It's, just, yeah. it's the hardest thing to do. Well, that's over at Toyota and Mazda. So they're going to share those engines. But meanwhile, Nissan has stopped spending money on new gas engines. But... Don't think they won't have gas engines in future vehicles. They have something called e-power, which basically is kind of like the Chevy Volt was. The engine will charge the battery in their electric vehicles, but it will not directly drive the vehicle. There won't be any connection between the motor, the, the engine, uh, and the motor, it will just be an engine acting as a generator. Now, if you remember the Volt, once again, they used, I believe, a 1.4 liter um, four-cylinder, which I thought that is one big generator just to charge a battery, isn't it? Yeah. So who and, knows and it, what they'll use? You know, it it revved up kind of high. and you know, um, But, yeah, they, 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 you, you got to get the energy from somewhere. And... and <laughs> And um, I, Nissan, you know, they, I think they're underrated. People don't realize that Nissan, you know, really is a is a fine company. Now, on the same uh, kind of uh, idea, VW, which was very recently saying they would be all electric, is now spending billions of its EV development budget on gas engines. A full third of its (laughs) nine-figure EV budget is going to go to new gas engines. And this was uh, reported uh, at an event held by Reuters in Munich where they said uh, the future is electric, but the past is not over. It is. It is a third, and it will stay a third of our operations. So there you go. Change just doesn't stop when it comes to cars. It, it doesn't. And uh, uh, remember, remember, tomorrow is a future yesterday. So. <laughs> on that note, we're going to take a break, and we'll be right back <laughs> with Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Interesting. How quickly it changes. It, it really is. I mean, and it quickly, 
with billions of dollars at stake. Yeah. You know, well, this isn't, uh, we're going to lose a couple hundred dollars. This is billions of dollars. Yeah. Well, hey, uh, it shows they can turn quickly, and they're not like the old yeah. days where, well, it yeah. takes us like six, eight years to develop a car. Well, that's that's the beauty of uh, supercomputers. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this affects thousands of people's jobs. Once again, I think they should help the oil company. I don't paint them as a, I know this is has to be done in the world of politics, which is terrible because po politics is not about getting things done. It's about getting people elected. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, <coughs> they drop. Excuse they me. dropped congestion pricing in New York because they were afraid they'd lose the election. Isn't that crazy? But they spent mm. billions of dollars on that to install all the stuff. I, I tell you, it's. Well, when I become king. I'm going to change things. They should not have to raise money for election and have PACs and stuff, but it's a whole business, you know? Just do your job. If you get it again, great. If you don't, it's the roll of the right. dice, you know? Right. You right. make the choices that you have to make. Nobody's a leader. They're just a job maintainer. They're not like Eisenhower that like with D-Day, like if he if he screwed up, that's it. He have his, you know, political head chopped off. And he and, but he that's was willing, right. said, I'll take I'll take the hit for it. I made a bad choice. I didn't get it done. I thought that was leadership, you know. Absolutely. I, I failed. And now, we, you know. Did you just freeze? Oh, oh geez. geez. Network, Network here. Oh, hold, hold on. on. You there? You there? Me? Hang, Hang on. on. We disconnecting. You there, Patrick? We just lost you. I'm back. You back? You hear me? Back. You hear me? Yep. Okay. Disconnected. In five. All right, Les, <laughs> you're coming in. Okay. Cadillac and Honda? Yes. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control. Speaking of hypercars. What? Which, well, I was speaking of hypercars. You, 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 were, you were trying to avoid the subject. But, no, in, <laughs> fact, uh, in fact, we teased uh, that Cadillac and Honda want to go into the hypercar business. Now, that's a weird business uh, because it's... What is made is really, really expensive. Uh, you know, look at the Bugatti Chiron. Yeah. Chiron, however it's pronounced. Um, and, you know, these things are a couple Rim million dollars, three Rimac, million dollars. All the Rimac, Rimac vehicle. Yeah. Um, and Pagani. And it's, P is right. it Pagani, right? Or is it? Yeah, Pagani. Right. And uh, Pagani. Pagani, that's it. And, that's uh, it. Uh, and uh, the one with the longest name, uh, uh, but it starts Koenig, with a Z. Koenig, Koenigsegg. Koenig, Koenigsegg, yeah. Yeah. Uh, anyway, Cadillac and Honda actually want to go into this business. Now, you know, I can see Cadillac doing it because it's a high end, but Honda isn't the first company I would think of mm. that would want to go into this business. Is it chest? Is it chest pounding? Is it? leveraging racing and turning it into a you know use that technology like and make a hypercar i mean do they make a lot of money off of hypercars it seems like it's, I, I it's low volume i and... wonder if they do i i think they do it for the love of it mm -hmm. i know that the, the the original bugatti veyron lost about a million dollars on every one they sold no, it's almost as bad but, as electric vehicles. <laughs> well, well, except that they knew they would because it was the idea was just it was an engineering uh, exercise that the company said, "Okay, you can do it. 
just to see if it can be done. Um, and and as time has progressed, it's probably breaks even or makes a little money. I don't know. Um, but Cadillac is planning to build a hypercar. They're not confirming anything specifically about the development. Um, they may draw upon their Formula One and Le Mans endurance racing efforts. If, um, if they do get a team in Formula One, right? Because Andretti's trying to do well, that. Well, yeah, see, they're not exactly, you know, at the Ferrari level mm -hmm. <laughs> of Formula One. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, uh, the, yeah, Formula One is, is great if you're, if you're winning, but otherwise you're spending millions upon millions of dollars um, you know, playing at that game. Their Project GTP race car, <laughs> which was later renamed the Cadillac V-LMDH. <laughs> yeah. Which is possibly the worst name for a car. That pretty well killed it right there. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah. uh, you know, uh, I guess Honda does have a, a, a sort of hypercar. They had the NSX and... They, they're talking about building a new NSX, but this would not be a hypercar. Uh, Acura, it's an Acura NSX. Um, I don't think that last version did as well as they thought it would. It didn't. I'm really surprised because it, it, was, a, it was a nice car. Future collectible, maybe? I think so. Yeah. Uh, I don't know why. It, well, of course, it, it was unveiled really at the... At, toward the end of the financial crisis, 2008, 2009. So that bad time for that. Yeah. yeah. But it's a heck of a car. Well, there's also talk that uh, Honda may team up with Aston Martin and uh, they might use the Red Bull RB17 hypercar as a basis <clears throat> for their hypercar. Um, well, it, it's just real interesting, you know, with all that's going on in the automotive world, uh, in turn, we're talking about internal combustion engines coming back and money being spent and EVs and all the technology and self-driving that they, that they would even, even uh, uh, contemplate, contemplate, contemplate this. this. Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't get, get it. it. Um, so, so I don't I know. Don't know. I don't know why they would do it, really. Uh, it doesn't make financial sense, but uh, but it maybe does, it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't have it, to. It does. It does put a shine on the uh, on the logo. It, it gets a lot of attention. Yeah, that's um, true. It's it's great advertising. Yeah, you don't have to pay the ad companies. Yeah, and they've already paid for some of this technology in racing. So yeah, uh, it's aerodynamic, but how do you make it legal and make it make a car like that roadworthy and yeah. also legal for things like pedestrian safety, safety, and integrate <laughs> all the safety systems into it? Yeah. yeah, but it's I I admire it. I admire the effort, but boy, oh boy. Um, just the, just the sheer risk of losing all that money. And how many cars do you sell? You know. By the way, Le Mans is coming up next uh, ne next, next weekend. Week. Yeah, it's going to yeah. be on Motor Trend in the U.S. And always fun. I like watching it at night and feeling glad that I'm not there driving <laughs> because it's foggy <laughs> down, and you're really tired and you drank about right. 20 cups of coffee, right? A little bit of drizzle coming <laughs> down and you're going down the Nilsson, uh, the Mulsanne Strait at uh, well, you can't go 200 anymore. They put they have a chicane. Yeah, they put a chicane in there. Yeah. Um, but uh, it, it's, it's true. true. It, it's, it's, it, it, it is, is definitely, definitely true. true. Uh, uh, hold, 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 hold on. on. We're, We're having, having a little, little technical, technical di difficulty, difficulty here. here. Yeah. yeah. All right. It is definitely true that uh, it is exciting to watch. And there used to be, before they put the chicane in there, they had a restaurant right along the Mulsanne Strait and uh, 
cars would go by at 220, things like that. Uh, so while you're eating your uh, faux gras, <laughs> or 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 your friend, your steak and frites, right? That's right. Uh, whereas the driver uh, stops in the pits and he eats a half smoke and a. I. Uh, that's actually a a whole um, a whole bit of science there. They actually have chefs that make food that they where do. you don't have to go to the bathroom. It's not right. heavy, so you right. won't get tired, and you don't want to drink a lot of coffee because. Believe me, as someone that's worked through the night, you feel terrible after you drink a lot of coffee. That that is true. Um, yeah, uh, I you know very few people. You know, everybody saw Ford versus Ferrari, and uh, I happen to know that uh, that this is 1966. Ford spent 23 million dollars. In, in 66 to field those GT40s and win. Yeah. So think about how much that would be today. Yes. Yes and yes. Yes. So I think the way to drive Le Mans is get a simulator and you can drive it. And if you <laughs> lose it on a turn, it doesn't matter. That's right. You can hit the reset button. Hey, we've got plenty more cruise control coming up here. Why big uh, trucks and SUVs may not be as safe as you think. We'll have some IIHS studies on that. And a new study says, less that people are not really uh, considering EVs as much as they were in the past. Plus, we'll have a look at this vehicle. One I'm actually going to review this week. Well, I won't. I'll review it next week, but I won't. Uh, I'm driving it this week. The Toyota Crown Signia Limited, which is quite quite the vehicle, right? Wow. Wow. And, uh, Les, let's talk a little bit about um, safety of larger vehicles, right? Uh, large SUVs, IIHS uh, tested some of them, and um, they weren't necessarily the safest safety. Uh, <laughs> safest <laughs> vehicles uh, right. out there. You would think large SUVs uh, would be super safe. There's a lot of steel around you and all that, but uh, it's not the case, is it? It's not the case. There are other factors to consider. Um, one, of course, is their their sheer size and weight, uh, which, which can easily make them unstable. Mm-hmm. Uh, in extreme situations. Also, the passengers in the back uh, can bounce around all over the place in a serious crash uh, if they're only wearing a lap belt. Uh, a lot of problems with big SUVs. Obviously, if they hit a smaller vehicle, then they come out ahead. But Right. Uh, that's, you know, you get a false sense of security in these things. I've seen most people I see driving big ones are driving like they're they're driving a Honda Civic. <laughs> that's true. Some of these you numbers, uh, they, they tried out the uh, Chevrolet Tahoe, the Ford Expedition, the Jeep Wagoneer. They all tried for the top safety pick plus rating, and you would think, these vehicles have been around for a while. They're large vehicles. They have all the safety equipment. Uh, it didn't get the top safety pick, and the first two nope. didn't even receive uh, <laughs> distinction. Uh, and these they are very, not. yeah. The Tahoe received an acceptable rating in the small overlap front test. Uh, and a poor rating uh, would be, uh, it talks that, about the different the ratings, worst. poor, good, and acceptable. Um the expedition scored marginal in the small overlap. Of course, this is the one of the most difficult tests where they're basically kind of going halfway across the hood, right, and right. and hitting an object um, that doesn't move. Um, and you would think these things would be very good at this. They have a big hood. They have a lot of nope. steel out there. Um, uh, so yeah, the driver's dummy's head hit the steering wheel in some of these uh, in the Wagoneer. Um, you know, they're just, they're big, but they are not safe 
Um, and and the, the other problem, which IIHS doesn't address, which I will address, uh, is that the drivers of the big SUVs don't understand what they're driving. Yeah, exactly. Uh, they're they're cutting turns too tight. They're you know uh, late braking, which is dangerous and expensive. Um, so they're driving these things like they really shouldn't be. Uh, you should be driving it like it's a bus and and not not a Corvette. Yeah, remember they are very high up in the air. They yeah. have a lot of weight on on top of them, and they're basically a pickup truck that's been made into a right large SUV. Um, so yeah. it it but as you said, when it comes down to them hitting a smaller vehicle, then the larger vehicle obviously sure. will do better. Probably over sure. override the the big vehicle, I would say, right? Well, it could very well do that. Um, it, it's a, yeah, it's it's a real problem. Um, but they're there, and people are buying them. So it's up. If they want to get good crash ratings, they're going to have to be re-engineered. Yeah, which could make them so expensive that very few people will buy them. Yeah. Um... You know, you look at uh, something like the EV9 from Kia, that seems like more of the future for a large SUV than just yeah. basing it on a pickup truck. But I don't know. They're very popular. They're, they sell a lot of Tahos and Suburbans and, and you know, Wagoneers and Expeditions. Yep. You see a lot of them on the road. So, But it it's a $90,000 vehicle nowadays, so it's not like it's cheap. Yeah. So, well, uh, let's talk about a new study, Les. Uh, This is from AAA, and you and I have been talking about this for a while, about EVs, and all the while it was exciting, the early adopters, the new vehicles coming in, people talking about it. It was the hot topic at the coffee clutch. Um, Right. Everyone has to buy an electric vehicle. Now, uh, AAA did a survey, and only 18% of those survey would consider an EV down from 23%. Hybrids are the hot topic and uh, electrics are kind of off the table for most. Well, uh, again, you're right. We've been talking about this now for six months. Yeah. Um, when things were going real hot with, with uh, electrics, but now people are, well, first of all, they're very expensive. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing. Second, range anxiety is uh, is just really bothering people. Maybe it's because they're they're thinking, well, wait a minute, I I kind of like an electric, but it doesn't fit with my lifestyle very well. And they make it, and correctly they make the decision. Well, okay, I won't buy one now. Uh, which we advise people, you know, get a hybrid. Yeah. Plug-in hybrid. Yeah. Uh, it's probably less expensive, and it, it you know, it's very economical. Um, I, I guess. What do you think? Do you think that maybe the 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 active market for EVs just got drained? That they all estimated there'd be more than than there was, and when they ran out of the market. Uh, everything just kind of plateaued. I think people are just not, just not there yet. For the vehicle size they yeah, want, right. they have to spend eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 to get a vehicle with less range. Right. Uh, I always tell people to dip their toe in with a Chevy Bolt or maybe a uh, Equinox EV now when that, that's coming out, and um, or lease because these vehicles – while they're very expensive now and and some of the higher end one end ones have a lower range it doesn't pay to spend money on them and then have something that's kind of outdated because um developments yeah. are happening really quickly and um, and make sure you've got enough available electricity in your panel in your house to to conveniently charge these Rather yeah. than have to go out somewhere to 
to charge right. them. Right. People are telling people are telling people that oh, it costs five hundred, six hundred dollars to get it installed. I know around here it costs twenty five hundred dollars, and if your yeah. panel can't support it, then it's going to cost some really big. Oh, money. it's going to be real expensive. But you need a sixty amp circuit, just like you have for your dryer. And if you don't have one available, um, okay, you, you can plug in on uh, on a, on a 120 circuit, but you're looking at many, many, many hours of yeah. charging. You'll get sick of that. There was a, a, guy, a guy that made an innovative product, Les. It was in California. Many people have their washing machine or dryer in the garage and it was a switch yeah. over box so you could use when you weren't because you're not using your dryer all the time so you could charge your car on that circuit uh and then when you needed the uh dryer i believe if you turn the dryer on it would switch over it was it was pretty slick i thought good idea good niche that's clever yeah well uh when we come back we're going to take a look at a toyota that is uh, really kind of like a Lexus without the Lexus badge, the Toyota Crown Signia. So stay tuned to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. We'll be right back. Cruise Control. And welcome back to Cruise Control, your on-air automotive magazine. Sorry about that, Les. Um, got a couple of more stories here though uh you and i have been kind of talking about the future of the business and um interesting news from the folks over at genesis you and i like their product lineup uh what were we talking about well electric vehicles versus hybrids so this is an interesting case the gv70 great vehicle available as just a gas model and then also available uh, as a fully electric model, which I've driven, which is which is great. You wouldn't tell the difference. And then um, it is now going to be available as an extended range hybrid, an EREV, which will utilize a small engine as a generator to charge the electric battery. It will be U.S. specific and... Uh, that should be coming sometime around later in uh, 2025, I would imagine. Um, they're going to uh, – actually, they're, it's going to be about 2026, they say. Um, but they're also talking about hyd uh, hydrogen in their lineup as well. Another manufacturer talking about hydrogen. So interesting stuff, right? It's, it is interesting. I, uh, Genesis, as you and I – talk about all the time is a, just a really solid company uh, they make terrific products um, not inexpensive but a value um, and here they go with their technology uh, and, and again you keep saying it that Hyundai and and uh, Kia are going to own the the EV business eventually I, I agree Genesis of course is part of Hyundai. Um, I mean, look at that. They, they can sort of just say, okay, what do you want? We can, we can configure it this way or that way, and yep, there you go. Um, and they do it really well. Well, let's talk about another company that does things really well, and that is Toyota. And this week they yep. revealed their 2025 Toyota Crown Signia, uh, and it's in a unique turn of events. I have this very car <laughs> as my review car for the week. Um, I just got it yesterday, so I want to drive it and do some uh, reviews of it. Uh, but it is very luxurious, and it's kind of described as the Lexus that is missing one thing, and that is the Lexus badge. It is so luxurious, and... It's an interesting point because some Toyotas are very luxurious. You're like, well, why would I pay more for a Lexus? This thing is basically yeah. a station wagon. Um, and it is available with a hybrid system and all-wheel drive, standard. 240-horsepower hybrid system, 38 miles to the gallon. And uh, wow. interesting that the grill 
is the same color as the bumper color. Uh, as soon as it pulled in, I thought, that looks like an electric car with that style. But it's not electric. It is a gas hybrid. Um, so two grades, 100% hybrid, 100% all-wheel drive. Uh, and uh, it is, uh, I think, going to be a harbinger of the future of the Toyota lineup with almost 40 miles to the gallon, a decent size, lots of luxury, um, all-wheel drive. Uh, this seems like it is primed to do very well, doesn't it? It really does, and they're pricing it pretty smartly um, because all that luxury is, you know, starts at 43000 which is a little bit less than the average vehicle sales uh number in in the country and and um, goes up to a higher grade of 47,990 which again is just right there at the average transaction price pretty you know that's uh, that's pretty impressive because it, it do, really does uh, look like a full-blown Lexus inside yeah, uh, I, I think that the, the two brands have come very close together here. And just something about this vehicle, the shape of it, the silhouette of it, uh, the interior, uh, all that, it is, I think, going to be one of their big sellers. And, and on top of it, 38 miles to the gallon uh, in a luxurious vehicle with all the safety goodies, all the, the latest and greatest functionality. Um, they call it a sanctuary on the road. Um, I, I just think it's a knockout for Toy Toyota. But let me drive it, and I will. Uh, I will get back to you. Maybe maybe we'll do an at the wheel review of this next week. How's that sound? Yeah, um, I'm anxious to see what you think of it. Yeah, uh, this the model I have. It only has like 980 miles on it, so it's a, a real real new vehicle. And I was surprised to get it so quickly which uh, might mean that we're doing something right here on on cruise control. So Yeah, it's not often over the years that we've gotten a vehicle during the same week that it's being unveiled. I know it, it happened once to me, and I forgot what it was. Um, it was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. But um, just, just a, a good vehicle uh, with all the latest technology, standard all-wheel drive. I mean, that's something to think about. When you're buying a vehicle, they say, oh, well, look, it starts at this, and then you realize, oh, it's front-wheel drive only or something like that. These are all hybrids, all-wheel drive, and uh, I tell you, I think it's uh, it's going to be a, a good vehicle for them. Uh, I have the Signia, which is the top-of-the-range model. I don't know what the other models are like, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll dive into it and... and uh, and, and have some information for you. So, hey, uh, do you want to do a quick round of uh, influencers doing stupid things? Oh, that's almost a new feature here. Uh, we talked <laughs> about the one guy that was mounting cameras on his cars and racing police and then posting the video. Funny thing, they found out where he was and there was the video evidence. So he uh, he got arrested for that. But now, uh, there is a new one. Uh, Alex Choi is charged with shooting fireworks at a Lamborghini from a helicopter, and uh, I believe you need a permit for that. <laughs> uh, at the very least, you need a permit for that. Yeah. He That's is, just stupid. He is uh, 24, and he's charged with causing... The placement of an explosive or an incendiary device on an aircraft. And he made his first court appearance this week. <laughs> I'm sure. He could face 10 years in federal prison, and that's no joke, is it? Um, this, this kind of stupidness, just for, just for Instagram or other video, is just, uh, it, it's, it's going to get a lot of people killed eventually if they don't cut it down to this Choi guy has has pulled stunts before and he's gotten in trouble so I suspect he's really going to get in trouble on this one and and you know he's listed as the director in the credits so it the can't director. say like 
oh, I, I didn't know about that, you know. So <laughs> he was driving a Lamborghini while two women in a helicopter were firing uh, fireworks at him. And um, wow. And that's a problem. <laughs> As they say. Well, now tell me who who uh, piloting the helicopter would let somebody fire fireworks out of it? Uh, that's another. I think that might be a problem for the pilot. I think that's a crime. Yeah. I yeah, mean, you, obviously, yeah. if they just start doing it and you didn't know, maybe. But, you know, let's say they said, oh, we want to get some pictures of this Lamborghini driving around uh, for a video. And then all of a sudden mm -hmm. they start firing fireworks. I mean, and you're flying the helicopter. I mean, there's not much you can do, is there? Well, you can. You can tell them to stop. You can I, maybe away. he did. I don't know. Maybe they did. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? But, uh, yes, wow. influencers gone wrong. Hey, we appreciate you <laughs> listening to Cruise Control. Don't forget to check us out on all our social media platforms where we don't blow anything up. Time for me yeah. to say I'm Fred Staub. I'm Les Jackson. We'll see you down the road. Woo! Made it through. That was just that well, we weird, did. weird that patch. Was, uh, that was a close call. Yeah, I was like, all of a sudden, it's like, and it's impossible to talk when you lose connection to Patrick. It's like such a big yeah. delay in the, internally in the box.